Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. We are here again. I'm the one and only big game dame. This is my main man, Do. Today, we're talking about it. This is day three of Eagles training camp. We're shooting this actually on a Friday. And a couple big stories actually happened uh, today in the world of football. And we'll get into it. But let's focus on the Eagles for a second. Coach Sirianni, first year, practice was a little sloppy. He stops everything. Stops everything. They do a players only meeting. Of course, this fan base. I was actually checking out Twitter. Okay. Very emotional. <laughs> Apparently, we're going, <laughs> the, the practice was sloppy, so we're going three and whatever. Only three wins, two wins. How you feel about it? New coach, just kind of setting the tone early for what he wants to uh, get done. I, I like that. I, I like to see him taking charge. You know, letting them know he's the sheriff. Um, here's the one good thing. I'll say about Sirianni, if he's going to be good, he has going for him. The two last coaches in Philadelphia to win championships, introductory press conferences didn't go well. No, and this one yeah. was, wow. Yeah, <laughs> so it, he has that working for him where we didn't think Charlie Manuel was going to be anything. We didn't think Doug Peterson was going to be anything. And at the Sirianni's introductory press conference, we were kind of on that same page. So to see him um, take charge, looks like he has an idea out there. I'm that's a good sign. I like this. Yeah, so. and, and if you look in his other press conference, and I don't know how many you've seen, but he's been way more relaxed. And when you get him on the subject of football, mm -hmm. and he starts geeking out on football and teaching and coaching, mm -hmm. I see why the Eagles made the move and hired him. Yep. I see it where it's okay. just like he's got energy about him. You could tell he's a football geek, you know? Yeah. Like and I said, I'm going to be objective. I'm just going to sit back and watch. I'm not going to rush the judgment. Um, but I, like I said... If you're asking for my opinion, I, I I like what he did. I I like the fact that there's energy there. There's a pulse, mm -hmm. and I think you know, especially with these, you know, younger players. I don't think with the modern young person, the Bobby Knight, Darth Vader, mm -hmm. overseer, that really works as much as the cool uncle. Mm -hmm. The cool uncle who can, who you know, these guys, all of them are at a PhD level when it comes to football. He can geek out with you. He can break things down. He can talk to you like a person, you know. And I think that's what Jeff Lurie always talked about, that emotional intelligence. Yes. I think that's really what sold him on Sirianni when I see things like that. You know, oh. we'll see. I have no yeah. idea. I don't think anyone can, you know, knows what type of coach he's going to be. But from an emotional standpoint, from actually connecting with players, that is a good sign. Yeah, I, I just would like to just remind fans, you know, don't get high, don't get low. Just stay right here and let's, let it play out. That's my advice to offense. Just, let's, just let it it's, play it's out. It's Philadelphia. They're already the Eagles already got two <laughs> wins because it's sloppy practice with no pads on. So I don't know. That's one thing Eagles fans are not is patient. So I agree with you. I think this is – I think this whole year is just – Take it in. See what's going to happen. So, but that leads me to what we're going to do today. And we're going to do a little name association. Okay. We'll do, we're going to start off with offense because I think that's where the most dramatic and drastic change has happened. Okay. Um, I'm just going to give you the name of the player. You're going to give me first word or sentence that pops into your head. We're going to do some key players on offense. We'll do defense next week. Defense will be next week. All okay. right. Okay. So let's get things started. Let's, let's get start. It. Let's start. You know what? Let's start number one with number one. Jalen Hurts. Intrigued. Uh, I'm I'm intrigued to see what he does. Um, I'm hopeful too. Uh, I'm fingers crossed that he's the real deal. Um, so yeah, intrigued, hopeful. If like I said, if he's the real deal, that really accelerates this rebuild. Yeah. Um, for me, my one word would be character. Every interview I've seen with him, he he definitely comes off as a young man with character. Um, leader. Leader. Yeah. Um, my daughter brought him home. I'd be like, whew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I don't know. Like, we'll see about whether or not, I think, and that's the question, whether or not he's actually physically going to be good enough for this level of play, this the speed of the game, yeah. the everything that goes into the game. You know, and like you said, if... If he pops. Yeah. And then the rebuild is accelerated. The rebuild. Yeah. So let's go with probably the biggest move they made in the offseason, the Heisman mm -hmm. Trophy winner, Devontae. Devontae Smith. I'm hoping they finally hit a home run 
with the wide receiver. So um, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that he can come in here and be a big-time player, especially in his first year. It seems like in this city, we always got to wait. So I'm 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 very optimistic. When yeah, it comes I, to him. I know off camera and before the draft, you had some concerns about his size. I I, I did I do, um, you know football to me. I wasn't a big Chip Kelly fan, but one thing he said always stuck with me is big people beat up little people, you know, and that yeah. always stuck with me. And but the guy, he's a football player. He, he says he's a football player. He's earned the. The benefit. So yeah. I'm like with everybody else, I'm gonna sit back and I'm hoping he pops. <laughs> yeah, my one word is unicorn. Where I just look at him and you look at his size. Okay. You look at his size, he's his wingspan, his build, his game is of a bigger player. Like everything is of a bigger player, but you see that small frame, and it's like okay. I just think you gotta when you the concern about the side, you gotta throw all that stuff out. This guy's a football player, he's gonna be fine, he's gonna be special. Okay. He's he's a unicorn. Right. So that's just me. Okay. You know. How about how about uh Jalen Rager? Out right now. You know, this he's is, going through some personal stuff. Um I would say concerned. I'm I'm concerned. Um to not pass your physical, physical yeah, the physical. As a wide receiver, that that's concerning. Um and I'm sure you heard the backstory why. We're not gonna go into a lot of details because it's yeah, personal. I, I understand but. it. So it, it just my experiences are when you come to camp with an issue, it seems to linger. Rather it be an injury, rather it be off the field, it just seems like it just sticks with you the whole season. That's kind of the first thing when I read about the story that, that stood in my mind as well, where it's like, okay, a lot of these, these players who kind of struggle their first year, hmm. and then they come back and then it's something else. And then there's something else. And yeah. then there's something else. You know, and that's... I kind of with you there were concerned. Yeah. You know, like he can't control what happened, you know, personally, but it's just concerning when, you know, the physical's not passed. Yeah. And then there's, you know, different things, you know, injury bug sometimes pops up for players like that in situations like this. So it's something that you got to keep your fingers crossed if you're an Eagles fan and just mm -hmm. hope for the best. I, I hope he's a competitor. And like you said, I, if the unicorn is good, then maybe that'll help push him also. Yeah. yeah. All right, how about white side? I'm staying with wide receivers. JJ. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, listen. They've got him playing in the slot right now. See what he could do. How about I say zero? I have no expectations. So if he contributes anything, I look at it as a bonus. But I'm not, in this camp, I'm not expecting anything. From you think he can pull an Aguilar? Where Aguilar kind of just for another team, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I like honestly, and that's no disrespect to JJ. I just think that I, I have no expectations. Like I said, I give him the benefit of the doubt and want to watch, but I, I have zero expectation. Yeah, it's I don't know. Like we'll find out if it was if if we if anything can come out of him. If it was like Doug and the offense they were running, and just last year was just so bad. Yeah. How about speaking of last year, uh last year's darling, Travis Fogum. I hope he gets a fair opportunity. That's what comes to mind because when you got two number one receivers, two first round draft pick receivers in front of you, of course they're gonna get every opportunity. And when the kid's on the field, he flashes. So yeah. I, I hope he gets a fair shot and I hope um politics doesn't do him in. Yeah. Um, politics and also are you concerned about his last couple games like he did you know when Carson was in there he had his he had his moments and then just it just kind of faded no no I mean because he's a young guy too and I just think a lot of things that happened last season I'm going to let go because as you know it just was a lot of stuff going on in that building so I'm gonna give a lot of those guys a pass I think once they decided to officially bench Carson, you know, just at that point, it Offense was just starting over pretty yeah, much. It was just kind of like, let's just get the season over with. All right. So how about Miles Sanders this year? Um, what's the, you know what he is? He, he, he's in a prove it, prove that. I, I think he got a, 
he was kind of highly acclaimed. He, he probably was getting a little bit too much pub. And I don't want to say it went to his head, but I, I need to see him prove. I need to show I need him to show me that he's an every down back. This should be the breakthrough year. Like I think this is the year, and I'll say this is the year where you find out what you have in him exactly. Like, you know, whether or not he's in that upper echelon or whether or not he's just a good player. I, I'll say this. I was higher on him coming into last year than I am coming in into this season. Yeah. Um, and once again, because we're doing the wait and see thing with a lot in regards to the Eagles, it's, you know, it was so bad last year. Yeah. You know, how much did that impact him? So how about Zach Ertz, the blonde bombshell with uh, <laughs> his 80s wrestler haircut? Um, I'm going to go perplexed. I, I think he's staying. I think I don't think there's going to be a move. I, I could be wrong, but I, and I use perplex because everything says that he doesn't want to be here. Like he 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 wants out. He wants a new start. If they're not going to give him the contract that he desires, and normally that's just not a good ingredient to have in the locker room. A guy that's just not happy. Um, Goddard is there, so it isn't like you. Like you're dependent on him as much as you were in the past, mm -hmm. and I just think with a, with everybody new, new coaching staff, if you weren't going to take care of him, it was best to even if you had to sell fifty thousand dollars just to go yeah. ahead and go in a different or direction. Or even I think it's it's kind of odd because, you know, it was the timing was it was time for him to move on, mm -hmm. and him being here, and in all probability, it looks like he's going to be here this season. Um, Listen, if if he if he's if he buys in and he's ready to play, that'll be great because that'll be great for Jalen Hurts because he's he's a proven commodity. Mm -hmm. But my my fear is I don't know if he's fully invested. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but how about Goddard? Since you mentioned him, um, I kind of have him with Miles Sanders, where this needs to be his breakout. I, he probably. I wouldn't be – I'll put like this. First thing that comes to my mind, I wouldn't be surprised if he had the best season of all the skill position players. Young quarterback's best friend is that tight and, end. And I don't mean that to say that he might have the most yards or the most touchdowns, but I think he's going to have the biggest impact on the offense. I think he's going to be the chain mover, the big play. I think, I think he's going to have – the best season of their skill position players. Okay. So let's go to a couple veterans. How about Lane Johnson? <sighs> Listen. We talk about the veterans. That's the first thing I think of is health. Yes. Um, can you count on them? Like, as you said, with the health, um, Lane Johnson is a premier. He's still a premier white right tackle in this league. And to me, I, I know we're going to get into the name thing, but that's where this whole thing resides with this offensive line. And if they can get – at least 13 games out of lane, I'm okay. Like, when he's on the field, I don't worry about him. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's just like, can he be out there? So, no worries. Just can we count on him? So, I got Kelsey and Brooks here as well. Can mm -hmm. we just put them all in the same category? A absolutely. At this point? Like, on paper, this is still a top 10, almost top 5-ish offensive line. Mm -hmm. But the caveat is if healthy. You know, so if the offensive line is healthy – then that that tremendously helps the quarterback. And I think it also gives us a, a a better opportunity to see what we have in the quarterback. He won't have that excuse of, well, he's playing behind a horrible offensive line. He's running for his life. Yeah. So I think it's going to make the evaluation of Jalen Hurts easier. You're going to know quicker what you have because he'll have, like I said, a top Actually five, that top time. ten offensive line where – you know, most young quarterbacks, you can't evaluate them properly because they're running for their lives. Like last week, last year, I should say, like, you know, when Hurts played, a lot of people are kind of down on him because his completion percentage was mm -hmm. so low. But that's one of the things is all of the problems with the offensive line. Exactly. What Doug was asking him to throw deep a lot. Exactly. You're not going to have, you know, if you're just running for your lives and throw it deep, you're not going to have a great completion percentage. So just to kind of piggyback on that point you just made. So how about the younger offensive line? And let's talk about that battle between Mylotta and Dellert. What comes to mind when you think of, think of those two? Once again, Howie has a track record of leaning towards the higher draft pick. 
to me, Dillard hasn't done anything to be given this job. I, I want. I hope it's a battle and may the best man win. And going into camp, I personally think that Malata should be number one on the depth chart, and Dillard's gonna have to take it from him. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm not holding my breath with like Dillard hasn't shown me anything to be excited about. At least Malata has flashed where okay, maybe so. That that's where I'm at with 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 Dillard and Malata. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of just wait and see because, like you said, um, I don't know if it's kind of the safe face, but, you know, like when you're running a franchise, I hate it when that happens, mm-hmm. when you automatically get pegged in just because you're the higher draft pick. It's like I'm trying to win games, but, you know, management, they have a lot of different things and there's a lot of ego involved. Exactly. And it looks good when, you know, hey, the guy drafting the first round is my starting left tackle as opposed to the, <laughs> yeah. the unsigned free agent or something like that. Then I that, think it you makes know. you equally as smart, but that's just me mm-hmm. that you can, you know, like even when I don't, I miss because everyone misses in the draft, I recover from it. But that's just me, you know. I'm not a general manager. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how about this? Boston Scott and the other running backs. I'll just kind of put them together as a group. Um, you know, running back is always that position where somebody pops. It's one of the easiest positions that trans transition to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not excited about their running back room. I think kind of like with the Miles Sanders, like Boston Scott, you know what he is. I'm not expecting Boston Scott to take some major jump. He is what he is. Mm-hmm. So I just want to see, like I said, consistency, you know, guys holding to the football, making the plays they're supposed to play. But besides Miles Sanders, I don't see anybody in that running back room to get excited about. Yeah. Do you think they're at least solid? Let's say that, you, like, Sanders goes down for a game or two. You're okay there? Or is it just uh... – Keep your fingers crossed. And um, listen, um, I know the young man name is, is losing right now that they drafted. I know yeah, that Gainwell. Yeah, that they're high on. But like I said, if, if Miles Sanders goes down, then it's I'm it's, I got to panic. I, I mean, I'm I got to panic now. Of course, like I said, a rookie rookie running backs could come in the league and make a name for themselves very mm-hmm. quickly. So I got to trust their process with these young guys. But if yeah. you're asking me, um, yeah, I'm not. There's nothing there where I'm excited about. Okay, so I'm going to stay with younger players, and I'm going to kind of put these guys together. Um, just younger players. Let's go really quick with these guys. How about Quez Watkins? The depth. Depth. Yes. So how about Dickerson? Depth. Depth. <laughs> We're going quick. Yeah. So, all right. And not young. Let's go to the complete inverse. Old as dirt, Joe Flacco. Um, I just hope that. He can be a common influence for the quarterback. You know, maybe he see things that Jalen don't see in real time. But other than that, if Joe Flacco is playing, then you know we are one. We must be going for the number one pick. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, we trying to solidify that. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. we don't see you. We love you, Joe. But hopefully you don't play this year. So, all right. Bonus round. Okay. Bonus round. Okay. Two players who are associated with Philadelphia. But do not play for Philadelphia. Let's start with Watson. Listen. You know the rumors. He's, we keep hearing these rumors. I know fans somewhat don't want to touch him because of the off-the-field issues. I mean, but the man can flat-out play. And if you can get him, you got to get him. I, I, you know, like, I understand. But it's a business, and you're trying to win. So, if he was to come here, I understand, I understand it completely. He's one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't think anyone would argue that. Yeah, and he's 25. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just be that guy saying, well, he wasn't convicted of anything, you know. He's, <laughs> so, hey, let him give him a shot, you know. But I, I understand the charges are, are – the allegations are serious. And it's not to be made fun of. But if he's not, you know, convicted of anything, listen, I mean – and quarterbacks play into their forties now. Yeah. So, so guys, twenty five, um, with that level of talent, you know, and people do grow up. Yeah. So yeah. and you know if they have the resources. So I'm just gonna say, well, yeah. <laughs> 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 you can bring him in. Yeah. Carson Wentz. Unfortunate. Like as we speak, like 
he got he just got hurt. There's no news on the severity of the injury. Um, I, I his think foot. Yeah, I think because of last year, we kind of forgot that he has the injury problem that he was injury prone because of so much, so many other things were going on. Um, listen, I, I'm not rooting against Carson. I, I wanted him to go to Indianapolis and, and show out. Go ahead and yeah, do your thing. Like, um, so I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm disappointed for him. I hope it's not serious, and I hope it's something that he can get back this year and play and, and, and show that he's he's a top talent in this league. I think Carson needs to show how he handles conflict and how he handles when things don't go his way. I think that's one of the things where the jury's still at. We saw in... 2017 when everything's going his way how great he can be um but let me ask you a question then what was is 2017 an aberration so in other words he's super saying out but did he max out right i'm there? just saying was, was 2017 just a special year he caught lightning in a bottle and these other years is what he is I, or is 2017 representative of what he is i don't think I don't. I think if you look at Carson's numbers, the other years they've been pretty good to decent. So I think 2017 might have been. That's Carson when everything is perfect, when everything is rolling for him. Okay. okay. The problem with that is number one, his style of play, and number two, it's the NFL. It's the NFL. Things don't go perfectly. Tom Brady, things don't go perfectly for you. It doesn't matter how good you are. Things don't go perfectly. And I think that's where the jury's still out on Carson, where it's like, we don't know what happened last year. We just know things didn't go perfectly. And since the injury in the Rams game in 2017, things haven't gone perfectly for Carson. And we've seen, especially last year, statistically, he was like the worst quarterback in the league. Yeah. All I thing I say is, man, listen, man, I hope it's not as serious. Good luck, man. Good health. Same. Same. All right. So, overall, mm -hmm. that's going to be it. Okay. So, next week, we'll talk about the defense. Next week, the defense. Defense will be a little bit shorter. That's more straightforward. There's more veterans. That would be a little bit more straightforward, all right? So, that's it for this edition of the Philly Sports Dish. Once again, hit us up on Twitter, wherever you can find us, Instagram, Facebook. We'll be looking for you. Questions, comments, ideas for possible shows, things we can talk about. That's it. I'm Big Game Dame, the one and only. This is my man, Do. We will see you next time.